Karina, we're here to talk about the IMEX annual talking point this year 24 and next year 25. We've gone for impact. Before we dig into what that means for us in the industry, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your CEO ship of IMEX. You've been a CEO for 14 years. Can you give me an example of how you maybe somewhere along that time made a decision to make a different kind of impact as a leader? Yes, I mean, over 14 years, you obviously develop your skills as a leader, as a CEO, you develop your confidence as well, and you develop a notion, I think, of how you want to show up as a leader. Certainly, COVID was a pivotal moment in many ways, but for me as a leader as well, because in that moment, especially at the beginning when we had to cancel that first show, I had to really think differently about how I was going to show up as a leader for the team, but also how we were going to show up as IMEX for the industry as well. And that really um, had an impact on me and how I wanted to lead going forward. And of course, it gave us the opportunity to pause, gave me the opportunity to um, read some books about leadership and culture and really think that through in a way that sometimes you don't have time for when you're just you know running from one thing to the next. So that sounds busy, potentially exhausting. So the other question that's always intriguing to ask somebody who's got the sort of portfolio that you have is how do you do it? How, do you manage your health in a particular way? Do you manage your energy levels especially? Yeah, I really prioritise keeping um, healthy and fit in particular. The last couple of years, obviously, I have um, got much more into climbing, bouldering specifically. And that's a great sport because it develops strength. It's an all-body exercise. But I also enjoy it because it's a good mental workout. You're constantly solving puzzles. That can be really helpful. Sometimes, you know, it helps me to solve puzzles at work whilst I'm climbing. But also there are challenges in climbing constantly. And you have to work really hard to overcome them. And sometimes you're scared as well and you have to work hard to manage your emotions in that moment to be able to take that next step and that's a skill that's helpful in life and certainly in work and I know that that has helped me in challenging situations um, in work. So talking about challenges with impact as a talking point obviously what we're looking to do is make a bigger impact and a positive one on the industry. What are the current challenges for the global events industry as you see them over the next couple of years? I think um, we have three major global challenges as an industry. The first one I would call um, advocacy stroke legacy. We have to start talking a consistent narrative outside of our industry to explain the legacy impact that events have on communities, on economic development, um, and other sectors as well. We have to find a way to measure that and communicate it in a coherent way to other global sectors, um, to po politicians as well. We also have to um, communicate the value of being in this industry, the excitement that comes with it, to um, attract better talent to come into this industry and find a way to develop them as they begin their careers and retain them in the industry. And the third thing is obviously sustainability. We have to show up in a way in the global economy that is sustainable. Otherwise, we will suffer as an industry and we probably should suffer as an industry if we cannot and manage our events, manage what we do in a way that drives towards net zero and be part of the solution, um, both in terms of how we're running the industry and our events, but also in terms of the influence that we can have on every single sector around the world. The main thing with those challenges are that one organisation cannot solve those on their own. We have to um, cooperate. Um, so this idea of cooperation, which is one of the things we're talking about, is critical because these challenges are only going to be solved if all the trade associations and all businesses actually put aside their differences and their um, competition to come together to solve these. That makes a lot of sense. What would your advice be to somebody who's inside a business, an organisation, an association, um, if they had decided to make a greater impact themselves? And I'm not talking in this context about, say, activism, but somebody who can see a problem that needs to be solved, 
they take on board what you've said about the industry needing to collaborate. What can they do? What's achievable? What would you advise? You've been there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm thinking about a person who's in a business, maybe not leading a business. And I would say that at any point, wherever you are in your structure, if you like, wherever you are in your career, if you see something that you think you can have an impact on, whether that's very small or something larger, put your hand up and try to do something about it. And I think that's the main thing that we can do. Internally, we call it be your own leader. And I always talk about the fact that anybody can lead, whether they're the youngest person to have come into the business or whether they've been there for 30 years. You can always lead. And if you do, that's how you have an impact. And I think that is also how you impact your career personally. But you can also, you just never know what comes when you actually take a step forward and get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I would say sometimes you might be sitting in a room at a meeting, the question's in your head, but it's about a little moment of courage just to open your mouth and think, I'm going to put it out there anyway, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, Thank you for that. One of our mantras this year around impact is, if not now, then when? So I think you've just absolutely nailed that. Um, Thank you.